How are you now? I'm James Whelan. Welcome to The Theory of Thing, sponsored by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. Uh, I am James Whelan, as mentioned, investment manager, and a reminder that all advice contained in this podcast is general in nature. If you need anything at all, tea, coffee, biscuits, please speak to an advisor about your needs. Mark Well, uh, I'm joined by Heath Moss of HLM Investments. Heath, how are you now? Uh, really good. Thanks, mate. I'd love a coffee. Thanks. We'll just get a cappuccino for me. That'd be fantastic. Mate, I've got myself a, what is that? That is, that's a, a black coffee. I can't. International uh, roast. She ain't international <laughs> roast, mate. But we've got, we've got a coffee. I've got, we're in these service apartments here, a theater of the mm -hmm. mind of a beautiful podcasting for people who aren't watching on video and we are available on YouTube as well. That we, uh, we've got a shared, the shared office in uh, broadcasting from the, from the Amfix studios here on Castle Road Street, shared uh, coffee location that we have, which dishes out. I've only just figured out how to use the flat white button. I'm a flat white guy, so I'm a strong yeah. flat white button guy. There yeah. is milk in the machine. It does. It comes out okay, but this is this is just a black coffee that gets me through podcasting for the rest of the day. Um, I'm trying to cut back on coffee, but failing miserably. Uh, Heath, mm. how's your coffee intake? Uh, it's generally I generally only have one a day, and like you, it's just a straight black. We do uh, we do the capsules here, the Nespresso cap capsule machines. Um, and unless I'm going out to meet clients or something, someone else, uh, BDMs, et cetera, I generally only have one a day. My, my wife actually has about three or four a day. So, um, yes. but, uh, That's about right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I've, I've eased right back, but, uh, yeah, black coffee, uh, there's actually literally zero calories in black coffee. It's, uh, it's good for you. That's right. When you're doing, I've been trying to do a bit of the fasting thing sometimes as well. Mm. You get up, you do, I do a, a, a jump rope, a bit of a marathon jump rope effort, some light lifting sort of thing like that. Because I am an athlete trying to get myself into going back to, to back, Japan, back to back gold medals and then trying <laughs> to get to Kawasaki for the 2025 jump mm. rope worlds, um, which is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yes, yeah, so I got to get myself set for that. So if you're doing the fasting thing, then black coffee does count as something that you that, that you're allowed to that you're allowed to consume if you're doing that morning fasting thing. I can only make it to mm. twelve until I start getting very very ordinary as a, as a human being. Um, blood sugar just absolutely drops down. But enough of this nonsense, my friends. The week that was mm. has been a week of turnarounds. It has Tell us no no flashing time, lights. Mate. Jolts. Yeah, there's no bad, no bad news, uh, no flashing lights. News. Yeah, bad, yeah, bad news is great news. Yeah, it, uh, the uh, market's been really, really strong this week. We saw the S P five hundred up around two and a half percent this week. Uh, I'll check the chart up that? here. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll check the chart up. There we go. There's the S P five hundred. We're, we're we're ready. We're organised. Um, we don't get a lot of whistles the, on this podcast. What, no, no, no. The uh, what is it? The Nasdaq is next up. We're up three and a half percent. But you can see on the S and P, it's back above those twenty and fifty day moving averages. The um, orange and green lines there. Um, mm. it, it's technically a breakout. It was in a downtrend there, where I think the uh, depth was about five and a half percent. So it's broken back out to the upside. And uh, like you said, uh, the the bad news is good news. We saw Jolts, Jolts uh, jobs report, um, which showed uh, job openings or job advertising um, at eight point eight million, yep. which is um, it was below the forecast of around 9.4 million and well below the last month of around 9.3. So companies are starting to advertise less over there. Um, and this could be the start of that. Uh, you know, we've spoken about it for a while where we expected to start in construction in, in the States where housing construction stalls and jobs get lost there. And it snowballs from there where, you know, people are losing jobs in construction, can't spend money, and that starts spreading over to consumer spending and jobs are lost there, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe, maybe we're starting to see the start of that over over there in the States. But um, the market rally, because obviously uh, it's basically saying, well, that's it, no more hikes. Um, I know there was a hike uh, priced in for November before this, this data came out. I think the chance of that has uh, dropped dramatically. So... That's basically what it's all about at the moment. Was the the, the weaker economic data pushing market higher? Yeah, it's uh, it it sure has been. And look, when one day eventually bad news does actually become bad news, that's going to be a whole different situation. Until then, mm. enjoy it while it lasts. This is part of the reason why I keep on saying it's better to be invested than to to take entire positions in or out of the market. Because if you'd missed those last four days, you are never going to be able to keep that catch that back up. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's been fantastic. I think the move that we had, BHP, did, did you want to touch on, I know that China, China's been a thing that we've talked about a few weeks on this one. 
the stirrings out of China with some of the things that they're doing do hint towards, well, they do hint towards potentially that we're looking at that sort of stimulization sort of situation, which then raises in my mind, this isn't direct stimulus. I think that they're talking about reducing the triple R, the, the the requirement, the ratio requirement, the banks are required to, to bank, hold. Bank reserve, yep. Thank you, reserves. Thank you um, that they're required yep. to hold, which then sort of creates stimulus. The problem that comes up, and this is one that I sort of have to remind people, and this is one that I'm going to have to remind people, I'm going to talk about China and then I'm going to talk about local. So go with me on this one. That the Chinese mm -hmm. situation as, as it comes is going to be if China is in a is in some sort of decline and a rut, and they do decide to kick in stimulus, that's going to push uh, resources up. It's going to push energy up, which is actually then going to continue to push inflation up for the cost mm -hmm. of things and the cost of fuel and things like that. So, in mm -hmm. fact, when you have a slowdown, which is helping inflation, because remember that there's huge theories that are saying that China is exporting its deflation, which people are seeing yep. as being great because that's keeping it down, which is keeping rates off. Uh, which is mm -hmm. then going to keep markets up, stick with me, if China then puts in the stimulus, which makes energy and resources go up, that is in turn actually going to put inflation back up again, rates back up again, markets back off again. Show me a way out of this and I'll give you a hundred bucks. Rhetorically speaking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, it, it, yeah. uh, it, 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 am I wrong? Of, no, not not uh, not uh, in a direct sense, but I think <laughs> there is going to be like I mean, if we if we see um, at the moment what's pushing inflation up still is uh, housing and uh, services, services and housing are still still are the the main causes of inflation. And even here in Australia, we saw our monthly uh, CPI data yesterday um, again, and uh, those two things were main contributors, along with uh, other other food as well, etc. Um, but which it actually came in softer than expected, those CPI figures, so we're still on the way down. But you, you're right, if they, they start to stimulating the economy in a big way again, you know, the things like iron ore, copper, um, oil, uh, all those sorts of things um, mm. start, price to start rising. But I I think the, the, other, the other way, the other side of things is if the EU is in, um, goes into recession and possibly the US goes into recession, and that's pulling the other way. Um, and we saw, yeah. what was it, yeah, uh, between it was 20, 2011 and 2014, oil traded well above $100 for those three, three four years and traded as high as around $150 a barrel, I think it was. And, and we, we saw little to no pressure. inflation. Yep. Good yeah. point. Well, yeah. so, also, I mean, because it doesn't get counted, or it doesn't, well, there's also there's hmm. also what they're counting in the fact that people like the Fed and the RBA don't do food and, food and energy um, not food, energy, food and fuel sort of as part of their takes because they're things that you can't actually get. However, when it comes to people actually feeling the pinch, they are things that people still still actually have to use and still spend their money on. Locally yeah, speaking... Yeah, food's one third of the budget. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. In fact, getting a little bit bigger as well. I'm trying to find ways mm. to save money on, on my food stuff uh, just coming into the last few weeks before the second level of my house is completed. Well done to the GVH Constructions as well for the work that they've done putting on another couple of bedrooms. My girls and family mm. finally have a place to stretch out and and mm. to... So they, this will be the first time they haven't shared a room. It's incredible. Um, Fantastic. 10, 10, mm. 10 years of, of them sharing a room. Um, now, where was I? Oh, yes, yeah, so speaking locally as well. So locally, we've had a bit of ordinary data too. Now, mm. there's, there's tremblings and murmurings away, and I'm going to leave this, and then I'm going to let you have a bit of a chat because I've got to figure out the, the, the football thing. Uh, there's murmurings that are on on route of saying that yes, this is actually the co the corner which is turned, and I don't want to quote the fund managers that I that I chat to, but and economists that the corner has turned with regards to uh, consumer spending, and that we are looking at the last quarter as it being this is the weak quarter. This is officially, and I've, we've heard this a few times. This yep. is officially the belt tightening, and yep. then. Yep. Uh, Run, so this is what happens to markets, the way that if you want a crystal ball at a really basic sense, you go, oh, great. What I'm going to do is short the consumer discretionary stocks that I hate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to short Harvey Norman. Go nuts. Uh, they reported this morning. I, I, you know, without even knowing, it was a beat. Great. Yeah, Perfect. It was a beat. Short, short the hell out of Harvey Norman. Go nuts. Take the immigration thing out of the out of the debate. Lots of housing, lots of TVs, lots of kettles and stuff like that. Harvey Norman's um, going to profit from, from a huge immigration spark. Take that out of the equation to say, you know, it's straight off. 
the existing economy is going to tighten their belts. They're not going to renew that television over Christmas. They're not going to renew the kettles, toasters, what, all the all the all the crap that Harvey Norman sells. Um, even if they wanted to be a sponsor of this show, I would not let them. I can't stand the company or the stock. The and now they know. The uh, they already do. The the fact is though that if you t- if you take a short position, if you're that way inclined, you take a short position to that particular consumer stock with this sort of thing impending, once the data starts to come through saying that, like we saw this week, that um, inflation is coming off, uh, what was our big number? Unemployment? There was some, it's gone completely Uh, slipped away from my memory about what the big number was that that, that hit that was. Uh, There was an Australian job starter last week where we missed and we we lost jobs. It was. What was the thing this week? It's, it's, what was, what was the data this week? (laughs) No, it was, it was, it was, it was a massive miss. Um, okay. And that, more of that is going to come through. Wow, that's incredible. So amateurish. I do apologise for that, people. That there, there was a big one. That it's actually slipped my mind exactly what the big thing was. Uh, that's gone. We're going to see more of that happen over the next mm. quarter. As that happens, we're going to go great. The RBA is not going to be cutting. Uh, the RBA is not going to be raising. We're going to see more cuts, earlier cuts. It's not going to be higher for longer locally. What happens next? Market goes up. So you can. Here's the thing. You're going to take a short position, which technically you're correct. But the fact is that companies like Harvey Norman will potentially get dragged up or at least not get hit as hard with the idea that relaxation on rates, and this is that same situation we're going to have, relaxation on rates, I mean, the people are probably going to have a little bit more money to spend, I don't want to say on what, into 2024, especially if they start to see rate cuts. I'm one of those people too, and, mm. and I can see that. So in effect, the fact that the one thing is sort of causing another thing, which is then it's sort of solving its own problem and actually causing its own problem. If you could sort of understand the circle that I'm going around with here. Yep. yep. Now you yep. go. Yeah, I can. Now, look, I'm going to find out what enough, that damn data was. That's killing me. Funnily enough, I've actually been buying a little bit of Harvey Norman this week around that oh, 370 good, to 380 mark. Yeah, um, I'm selling and, to you. And, yeah, my thoughts are, and I'm obviously on the other side of the fence here with you is, is uh, Harvey Norman has a very high correlation to Australian residential construction. Um, yeah. People build houses, they buy new lounge, bridge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you see it all the time. And that data can't get any worse. I think we're seeing figures as bad as we saw in the lows in the 90s or along those lines. It's, it is extremely bad data at the moment, construct, construction data. So there are plans and federal federal uh, and state plans to build a, a crap ton new houses over the next five years. I think the federal plan is 1.2 million homes over the next uh, five years. Um, so construction will start picking up. We need it to. We've got high net immigration. These people need to live somewhere. We've got renters that want to move into their own house, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we, we need more people, places for people to rent. So construction will pick up again. And this is how the, the, the markets work. The markets are starting to... Uh, forecast that in possibly into Harvey Norman's price. And we've seen it well off its lows of around 330, 340. It's now about 380, 390. Yeah. Um, and they're expecting in 12 months' time, hey, things are probably going to be a bit better. This is probably the the, the worst Harvey Norman, et cetera, are going to see um, in Q3 this year. Um, and uh, things are going to get better from here. Um, and you can you can count that for, say, your JB hi fi your baby buntings, your bears. You know, they've all said similar things. And I think we covered it last week was, you know, sales are down, foot traffic are down, is down, volumes are down, and even online sales uh, are down. So people are spending less on those. Still going to those restaurants, like uh, like we've been saying for a while, but uh, as for goods and services. So that's my theory and why I think we'll start to see Harvey Norman um, uh, drag itself back off the canvas. I mean, because it was trading below around 10 times uh, forward earnings there. So the damage was done. It had been focused in um, JB Hi-Fi right, is trading around 14 times. They're trading much higher premium to peers. It is a better business. I won't I won't argue that, but it is trading at a much higher premium. So okay. yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit on the other way of that. I'm, I'm not shorting. I wouldn't be shorting Australian retail here. I think the damage is done. We're seeing some prices of these stocks down 50 to 80% in some cases. In Australian yeah. retail, especially you look at baby bunting, you know, ties during COVID, and now it's you know extremely well down. Uh, so well, yeah, I'm 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 the opposite. I, I'm I've been buying a little bit of Harvey Norman um, on the basis that construction can't get much worse, and we'll start to see an uptick in that towards the end of the year and, and into 2024. 
Well, just so that we're clear, I'm I'm not actively. It was sort of more of an example that you were, but I just it was yeah, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. that um, that you are. And if you want, like I said, general advice only. Uh, okay, now let's see. I've got a tweet here. Um, what else have you got? I've got a tweet here. I'm just going to put this up. Oh, no, it's not really a tweet. Yeah. I'm just going to go through interesting things which I saw uh, over the week that was. So there's that. Let's see if I can get this to work. Ooh, I can. Hey, can you see that? Yep, the yep, household yep, savings yep. and spendings. This is locally. The changes yep. in spending four weeks to the 23rd of July, 2023. So it's close enough. The source is the Commonwealth yep. Bank of Australia, the big yellow. Hello to all of my CBA colleagues, former colleagues who are listening, and I know that how much they love listening to me and waiting for me to fail. The uh, What have we got here? Blue. Where are we going? So that's the change. The changes in spending that we've got. Red spending, uh, blue is savings. So you can yep. see as Thank as you. people are getting yeah uh, explain it to people who are only listening as well. So I've put it up here. But it's like... <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, pe- it shows people uh, the the older demographics. So from say forty years plus are are spending more, but they're also able to save more. Obviously, that's yes. because you get into that later years. Your your mortgage isn't as large, and uh, you, you maybe pay, you're not spending more in education. Also, the spending... savings rate the savings rate has gone up too. So yes. the amount that they've yes. actually got in there is actually starting to to, to increase too. Yep. Yeah, well, of course, you're earning, you know, 4 to 5% just having money sitting in cash. So it's easier for your savings to grow as well. Uh, so and the then obviously, yes. Yeah, so, so the savings, the blue, so for the 18 to 24 demographic, the change in savings, including offset and all deposits, has decreased in savings, has decreased by about 6% yep. in the four weeks to the 23rd of July. That's yep. 18 to 24. 25 to 34 has decreased by about 3%. That's the savings rate. The change in spending has also decreased somewhat too, not drastically, mm-hmm. but we can see through the middle up to the higher age gaps. Sorry to jump in, Heath, but this is my chart. That's all right. And I, I probably should have checked I'll out what it. the bars actually meant before I, before I just threw it to you. Um, that, yes, uh, savings rates have gone up, as has spending as well. This has been This has been a cycle in which people under the age of 35 have been dealt with badly how does that sound and they will, uh, yeah they will, correct. They, will, they will they will not respond kindly to this i feel and i hope no. they don't as well because no. hey they've got a future ahead of them of saying it's really difficult for me to own a house it's difficult for me to rent it's difficult for me to buy food even work is crazy if i actually get paid what i'm owed uh you know what's the point of any of this people need to own their own homes anyway that's a band a bandwagon i'm gonna get on we're gonna have a uh we're going to have a uh, a lender on uh, on next week. Um, he's going to be good. He's going to run us through some of the things that he's seeing in the market too, which is great. Really looking forward Fantastic. to that. Uh, next tweet that I've got here. Yeah, this is the Jolts report showing just how badly everything uh, everything went at the beginning of the week. Mm. That uh, that number really was just crazy. The Jolts report showed a huge drop in job openings. Actually, yes, last night as well was the PCE in the states, weakest in I think yep. about eight months. Um, amazingly bad data. This is this is uh, the next chart. The, the amount of times the artificial intelligence artificial intelligence related mentions on company transcripts and earnings calls has gone from five six thousand um, the times that it was mentioned in twenty twenty two up to almost thirty thousand mentioned through earnings calls in the states in twenty twenty three. Phenomenal jump, <clears throat> a hockey stick, hockey stick of a chart. Finally, this one, I'm just going to blow this one up a touch so that people can see what's going on here. Look at the professionalism at which we're working here. Isn't that incredible? Uh, Fantastic. And this is buybacks. 29% of stocks are buying back their shares. This is from Bofa. That's the highest level since draw a line across there. 02, very close to where it was 09. Nothing, mm. nothing, no correlation between those two numbers there. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I, I, I always hate those guys who are just like, oh, it's – we haven't seen it that high since 1987, and we all know what happened that year. Yeah, the market went up. Mm. Um, but mm. yeah, anyway, look. So, so stock buybacks actually back, definitely back up in the in the in the upper echelon. Uh, percent of stocks buying back their shares. Go. I've got a great stat that sort of lines yeah. up with that, and I didn't put it in the, the show notes. I think I put it in our group chat uh, last week or so. But this oh, is sorry, obviously yeah, obviously up. because of um, tech. I mean, such massive operational cash flow, positive cash flows there. So. Yep. Um, so ten years ago, um, the, the the market cap of uh, all of all of tech, the big seven that we're looking at now, um, is a, about a one, 
about 1.1 trillion. And the, the, the operational cash flow, positive operational cash flow, they have generated over the last 10 years $2.3 trillion. That's so a few. Double their market cap 10 years ago. So you can see why A, there's so many buybacks, and B, why these stocks are trading at such high multiples is because they're just cash generation machines. Um, we've seen it with Microsoft, Amazon, um, Facebook, you know, yeah. Google, Apple, but all of them. They, they, they just generate so machines. much cash. Mm. And I thought that was a great yeah. stack. So, ten, yeah, 10 years yeah. ago, their market cap was around 1.1 true, I think. Um, and now the cash and, that they've uh, got they're, on hand they're, is 2. about 2.3. No, no, this is just operational cash flow. It's operational cash. Now, now it's operational cash. Is now is now almost two and a half times what their market cap was two years, ten years ago. Yes. I was yes. listening. Sorry. I was listening. <laughs> Doesn't always look that way. Um, yeah. mate, we're we're gonna try to keep these tight. So give me a footy tip. We're moving into final no season tip. for the Apple. What have you got? There's no footy tips. There's no footy AFL on this weekend. They have the they had the week off. So oh, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing such... this weekend. Such but shame, uh, last really. week I had my uh, my uh, my Essendon one failed miserably. They got spanked. Oh but my, my gosh, North Melbourne awful. tip, my North Melbourne tip, which was paying three dollars fifty four, came in very nicely. Okay. They beat oh. uh, the Gold Coast. Made money back. Made yeah, money back so nicely. Mate. Well. well done. Hmm. Uh, uh, have you I, I got NRL a... this weekend. Mate, we got NRL this weekend. I've had a look at it because this is uh, there's calls for the NRL for this to go. You know what? To, for us to have that week off, because the amount of players that are getting rested, like entire teams are just getting rested. We're seeing reserve yep. because I mean, take Penrith for example. If you're second, you're like it makes no odds for us if we're gonna if we're gonna bust our asses and get out there and, and push hard because then we're gonna get round one of the finals. A couple more players are gonna be injured and we're gonna be in, in all sorts of strife. So it's yep. it, I reckon it's almost guaranteed that next year they're gonna have the week off, same as the AFL is doing. Hopefully yep. it won't be the same week because I you know and then I actually have to talk to my family um hello if you're listening and i know that they're not that uh that's a joke too by the way but look this week i've got because based on that same theory the north queensland cowboys i think they desperately they desperately need to get in um to the eight and i think that a win does put them in i haven't actually researched that as hard as i probably could have they've got a nine and a half point start with the penrith panthers panthers i think that that they've they've checked out for a week this is going to be their uh, their mild Monday going ahead. So look, Panthers are already through. They had it. They sustained a pretty nasty injury for one of their guys last week. He'll be out for a long time, I think. So that his shoulder got pulled out of his face, and I hope he's okay. It's, uh, I hate seeing an injury in slow motion, and uh, that's it. So look, I'll take the Cowboys with nine and a half. Um, that'll pay you about a buck ninety. Go nuts with that one. Uh, yeah, last absolutely. bids, mate. Oh, and also uh, congratulations and thank you to all of the people who contributed and attended the Northbridge knockouts jump rope uh trivia night i hosted i hosted a fine trivia night i hosted three quarters of a fine trivia night and then uh i think the fireball just caught up with me and i i, I just well the money raised itself by that stage that's what you that's what yeah. you've got to do people people like to see I, I was selling answers for shots and uh well oh God. she turned ugly <laughs> it, it'll do Never that but well. anyway look once once you've once you've raised the money and it's done everyone had a good time and, and everything just starts to dissipate anyway the ability for our little town to to come together and and just raise inc incredible sacks of cash is just great. Punches above its weight when it comes to that sort of thing. I think we raised about twelve or thirteen grand a lot, um, which is good. That goes a long Fantastic. way to uh, to helping kids do sport. Check out jump rope any chance you get. Um, it's a great sport. All you need, and this is my new slogan that I'm doing. All you need is sneakers and a smile. They give you a rope. It is the most accessible sport you could possibly get into. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, on that note, mate, last bids. Have you got anything to, to add? No, I've got. I'm all. I'm all done, mate. I'm all done. All right. Clear. Have a good weekend. Have a great weekend, mate. Stay safe and mark well. See you later.